we have this pretty cool interesting article courtesy of the business of fashion talking about the state of influencer economy and how things are moving and changing so there's a couple of slides here that i thought were of interest or one slide in particular but i'll read the caption itself this is courtesy of a business of fashion instagram account and it says things move fast on the internet in just the past few years we've been we've uh, 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 there've been a number of changes in the social media space and influence economy built around it for one brands are betting on influencers with day jobs working with creators like sky ting founder chrissy jones or james whiteside principal dancer at american ballet theater as they look for uh, uh, relatable ambassadors to reach engage all Businesses. The line between average social media users and influencers increasingly blurred as non-influencers endorse products online. Wildly, people learn more about brands from other people rather than brands on storytelling. It's becoming even more important for brands to be on every platform and influencers to have their own platforms. That most brands, is a quote here, most brands have probably not fully recognized the understood the impact of all their customers having a platform. This is existential to the brands. If they can't figure this out, they won't be able to compete in a decade says james nord the founder of influencer marketing company for so this is something that i've kind of noticed and kind of known for a while because my idea of being an influencer or my idea of being somebody of some merit that people would want to listen to or want to seek advice from is somebody i feel like is without is kind of a without compromise or somebody that isn't beholden to the brands that are paying them and i think a really good example of that is somebody that i've kind of always looked up to is hiroshi fujiwara and in general how he kind of approached being an influencer or a tastemaker when he used to have a column in all these magazines like you know asayan that i have that used to write a column where he basically recommend records to buy um, books to read movies to watch jackets to buy holidays to go on it was always from the point of view of being the consumer consumer right somebody that was willing and happy to spend money um out of their own pocket to go to these far-flung places collect these awesome things connect with cool people around the world just because they like doing those things and not because you know Ramoa was sending them to go and test the flipping you know carry-on luggage in the depths of flipping morocco no they were going there because they heard that this place in morocco had the best whatever dish and they also stumbled upon somebody that sold the best carpets whatever it may be it kind of comes from a real place and i felt like especially nowadays maybe because it's so easy to buy followers and to basically fake it till you make it and look like you're the real deal in terms of your reach and no, in terms of the followers that you have in terms of how you basically tag things online you can make it appear like you're a real kind of highfalutin um, very well regarded and well connected influencer who's been sponsored by the likes of Adidas and Nike and Givenchy and Balenciaga when you could just when you're just buying yourself right but the thing that's not really influencing is that you're usually buying things that you'd want people to get give you for free they're usually also things that are already trendy and already kind of within the popular kind of zeitgeist and culture you're not really revealing or providing people with new or fresh things that they can kind of you know um, consume um, read or just experience it's all things that are already out there and I feel like that level of com influencing is gone because that person, he or she, is most likely the person that's thirsting for free tickets to a fashion show, free tickets to a premiere, an invite to a party. They want to get the free clothes. They want the free merch. They want to look for the runway, but they're not going to support an up and coming you know, designer. They're not going to go watch um you know a small production play they're not going to go and test out a new restaurant that opened out and writing about it on their instagram account they're only doing the things that people are coming to like it's kind of like inbound influencing you're just waiting for brands to reach out to you because you've got a, you've got an audience and you've got some followers so that they can tap into them but you're not actually influencing in the conventional way that i would say influencing is which is the idea of like you know you're a very fashionable girl but then you might have a particular hairband a particular brush that you use a particular brand of overcoat that you like that's not very popular and then suddenly you highlight it on your instagram and then bang it sells out in seconds that for me is real influencing influencing isn't getting you know the flipping balenciaga and, and gucci collaboration early wearing it and then hoping people buy it because you wore it that's already going to sell out because of the brands that are involved actual real influencing is going to a vintage shop and finding or no going to i don't know 
going to Zara or something like that, right, and finding a really cool Parker that a lot of people are overlooking that's maybe only $40 and then kind of putting it on, mixing it up with all the designer clothes you wear, and then suddenly that becomes a big deal. And I feel like brands are realizing now that not really getting a lot of return on their investment, especially now in a, in a sort of like downward economy. You want to make sure if you're paying an influencer the big bucks that you're seeing on a return investment, which is why for the most part, the influencers that can sell items, the ones that who, you know, can legitimately um, shift units are the ones that are really, you know, the top, top, top of the tier. I think the rest of them, for the most part, are just kind of image things. They're people that can maybe amass a following. They can maybe get a lot of engagement on their posts, but will people actually go and spend money on the things that they recommend? Probably not because they know it's not real. It's stuff that they're being endorsed by. It's stuff that people, they probably got a deal with them they maybe got an affiliate link it's never something that's coming from a real place and that's a real shame i feel like them hopefully we'll see now a lot more influencers being a lot more resourceful and basically buying their own things like that they like and then kind of showing it off to people i feel like that's kind of the basic premise of being an influencer but for the like i said longest time they were just all waiting to get kind of free products given to them but i feel like now in a sort of downward economy with a recession going on at the moment there's probably not a lot of money going out there to influencers i would imagine maybe i'm it's opposite who knows but i would imagine for the most part everyone's kind of feeling the pinch after the case then if you're an influencer you probably should put put your hand in your own pocket and buy stuff and support things that you actually like promote that on your platform and then that will take you to the next level of stratosphere in terms of being an influencer where you're legitimately affecting things in real life and in culture you're not just like kind of putting up looks on flipping social media and hoping that you get a certain amount of likes that's probably the next frontier going forward so it's cool to see some of the things that i've been thinking about be echoed in this report courtesy of business of fashion so of course if you want you can check it out yourself you know the link is over here on the page you know where it is you can find it you know what b o f looks like and if you don't i'm sorry i can't help you <laughs>